Taya Toshi. Seen that a couple. Oh, this time. So we're back here for another breakdown video. Today we're at the 2019 World Championships in the 60 kilo category where we have Turkmenistan versus Guyana. Okay, the player from Guyana is actually training in Canada with the Canadian national team in Montreal, but he's here at the World Championships representing Guyana. Let's take a look at the video here and see what we got. So we have Turkmenistan here in the white gi, hits a drop tile to start the action, hits it again, and throws for Epon. So one of the things that we always try to tell everybody is, hey, a lot of times the best time to attack is right after a missed attack. That goes for both sides, Uke and Tori. Okay, in this instance, Tori, the white player from Turkmenistan, tries a drop tile, gets back up, pauses for a split second, lets the Guyana player think, oh, I haven't been thrown, I've recovered, let me relax for a split second. Once he hits that relax point, Turkmenistan comes back in, fixes, makes some adjustment on his technique, and then ends up throwing free palm. So let's go ahead and play this through and let's talk about some of the key just factors inside this throw. Okay, so as we're starting, we have Guyana here in blue in a left-handed stance and we have Turkmenistan in a right-handed stance. That's important to know because as we're starting to move through this technique, right, and we're gripping, look at what he's done, right? When we had that overhead view, remember, Turkmenistan was in a right-handed stance, okay? What he's done now is he's brought his stance into more of a square stance with zero grips on the gi, which is really dangerous to do because you could be thrown at any point right off the grip. But he seems to have made it work out, and what he's done is he's lulled, right, the player in blue here into taking a grip. And the number one mistake he makes being in this position is putting that hand on the gi first, okay? The player in blue, being in a left-handed stance, should not be putting that right hand on the gi against a right-handed fighter because it enables a one-handed tile off the grip, okay? Just speaking of that, right, you can tell Turkmenistan in white can grab that sleeve. He can one, two, three-step tile his way across. He has a perfect opening all the way across, right? He has no defense. He has the right hand on the sleeve. Everything is working in his favor. Right from the very beginning, Turkmenistan has done a good job of just setting the stage to be able to have a successful attack. Okay, so as we're starting to work through this, right there, boom. You can see he did just that. He takes that grip here on the end of the sleeve. He smacks right here. It's a little blurry, but you can see he pats, right? He takes this grip and he kind of pushes Blue's hand out of the way so that he can come across on the end of this sleeve. And then you can see our legs are locked out here. There's no longer an athletic stance, right? When the legs are locked out, it's very hard to break at the knee and squat and drop your level to start playing some defense, okay? So that's a bad position to be in while we're here. And you can see he's already started his entry down here with his feet. So as we start moving through, he jumps. Now, an interesting thing to just kind of point out when we're talking about drop tiles is this is a little unconventional from what I've seen from other more, I guess, experienced players like you would see from Korea that have drop tiles. His tends to be more of a drag rather than a turning throw where he tries to pull you down to the mat and then roll over the top. And you can see that by his hands collapsing into the body nice and tight. He's jumping through the air. He has nothing on the ground down here. And what he's doing is he's attaching that arm to his chest. So when he drops to the ground, it causes his opponent to almost bend at the waist and then he can roll them over from there. Okay, so as we're starting to move through this technique and we're really breaking it down, this is where it went wrong for Turkmenistan on the first attack. He did a good job, right? of getting the hand here to the chest as we're moving through, right? He's got everything down. He's pulling him down in front of him, which is great. But what he's done is he's leaning a little bit too much to the back side over here. And what you can see right behind the IJF thing here is Blue's foot is actually in the air, okay? And that's a problem when you're trying to do tile because if that foot's in the air, it easily steps over that leg that they're supposed to trip over, okay? And that comes from White just leaning a little too much to the backside instead of curling forward, getting the opponent's feet flat to the ground, right? So as he starts to come through here, boom, you can see he did a good job of getting the downward momentum, right? 
but you can see that he's missed the foot. Blue was able to step over and therefore he was able to spin out. Now, you know, we could talk about what Blue should have done a little bit, right? Like in this scenario, I see from my experience a perfect opportunity to win this fight on the ground, right? When we look at the scoreboard, Blue's down by Wazari. There's a minute and 22 seconds left. You've almost been thrown, but you have a hand on the gi. You have the ability to work here in order to punish your opponent for a bad attack and hopefully win this on the ground. But that's just my own view on how I would have attacked this situation. But he ends up spinning off, falling down to that knee right there. You drag him, you put him in a front headlock, you go for Sankaku, you spin to the back, you do anything from this position to keep him down and start working him on the ground, right? But he ends up standing back up, boom, right there. Huge mistake, huge, huge mistake. When you fall to the ground off somebody's attack and they're still holding onto the gi and you're still holding onto the gi, you never stand back up. That's like the first thing that's ever taught at the junior cadet, like kid level of judo. You have two hands on the gi, you get thrown. Well, that person has two hands on the gi. If you stand back up, guess what? He can throw you again, right? So you stay down, you work the newaza, you get out of the situation, wait for the ref to call mate, and then you're back up on your feet so that this situation doesn't arise. But he stood back up against common sense. And then what that happens is, Turkmenistan is able to fly through the air, same technique twice, boom, right there. And then this happens, right? It's a very interesting position. I'm not so sure the Turkmenistan guy would have gotten this attack off with a more skilled player or a physically stronger player, right? Because I don't think a skilled player would have been able, would have A, stood up with those grips after being knocked down. They wouldn't have done that, but B, just looking at the position here, I think a stronger physical player would have been able to pull that sleeve back out and then this wouldn't have happened. But nonetheless, he was able to get in on the shot and if we look here, right here, he's able to take that left foot of his and get it inside position, okay? And what happens is he gets his hip and everything involved into this technique right here because Blue's shin and inner leg is now against to, uh, Turkmenistan's uh, body right here. And then we actually have him tripping over the leg. His knee is coming down into the attack and he's able to basically drag him down through the technique and then roll his shoulders. And you can see right here, <clears throat> right here, that Turkmenistan did just what he wanted to do. He basically locked onto that arm got him to trip over his leg and dragged him straight down to the mat, right? There's not even body contact here, but because he's laying on his arm, once he's on top of his arm, he basically rolls over the arm and, and gathers up into the body in order to finish this technique. Okay, so let's play this out. Boom, and you can see him just drop the hips there, finish the technique. So a couple of key things to just kind of point out is when you're trying to do your judo and you're trying to make something happen, right? I don't think the Turkmenistan's goal was to necessarily do this attack once, attack twice. I think he was using more of an opportunistic approach to the game. But at the end of the day, he does within his own judo have a solid foundation for a technique because he understands what he's trying to do and what he's not trying to do, okay? He's kind of abandoned the traditional tile, traditional drop tile and he's made it his own that works inside of the judo style that he has. Okay, he's locking the hand into the body. He's using his weight and gravity to drag his partner down, getting them to trip not only over the inside foot, but also the leg that goes across. So he's getting all the way inside, just like you would see like a drop seo or a drop seo toshi into the position and have a good score inside the technique. Tayatoshi, seen that a couple, oh, this time a double stab at the Tayatoshi for this time. And Jumaev will be up against the number two seed, Takato, and that will be a major hurdle for him to climb. But here's some of the highlights of that first round for him.